Hey, Kristen, good to see you today. I uh, wanted just to just take a few minutes and share some things with you. A lot of this stuff we've been over before, but I just want to kind of recap it and uh, talk about it, make sure that I give you all the best tips for changing chords. There's some new chords for you on page 36 in your book. Uh, the chords at the top of the page are A minor and D7. So let's use that chord change as an example. But you could use these tips for any chord change that you're ever working on. But we're going to use A minor and D7 as our, as our example. You know, the first things first, you just got to get your fingers on the chords for the first time and begin to change back and forth from one chord to another. But once you can do that with a little bit of ease, then you want to use your metronome. And so I'm going to turn my metronome on, and I'm going to turn it on 60 beats per minute. And we're going to give ourselves four full beats, four full beats to make this chord change. And you would definitely want to count out loud. You don't have to let your chords ring for four beats. It only has to ring for a, minute, for a moment. Even if all your strings aren't ringing clearly, let's not even worry about that right now. Let's just make the chord change from A minor to D7, like this. Three, four. One, two, 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 three, four. Make sure you count out loud and strum down on beat one no matter what even if your hand doesn't get exactly where it needs to be go ahead and strum down on beat one get used to strumming down no matter what now after you've mastered that and you've gotten comfortable doing that in four beats then you're going to force yourself to do that change in three beats and you'll have to force that at first it'll, it'll feel a little awkward it'll feel a little rushed go ahead and force yourself to do it in three beats then force yourself to do it in two beats even if you need to slow your metronome down just a little bit you can do that you can slow your metronome down but force yourself to make that chord change in only two beats and then lastly do it in one beat only that'll make you really quick at your chord changes whatever chord change you're working on another thing that you can do when you're working on chords you know, when we're first starting, there's always a first step. So when you go to when you go to your D7, maybe there's something that you do first. Take note of that. Maybe you place your first finger first. Maybe you put your second finger here first. Or, you know, whatever you're doing first, make a mental note of that. And then begin to change that and try a new approach. Put a different finger down first when you go to D7, okay? And that'll really help you speed things up as well. Now, the other part of working on chords is, is cleaning them up and making each string ring clearly. And um, if you're just getting started on guitar, then, of course, you don't know if all your strings are ringing clearly because you're not sure what these chords are supposed to sound like. So you have to check it like this. A minor is a five-string chord. We don't want to play the big string for A minor. Even though E, the note E is a part of it, the A minor chord, it, it muddies it up a little bit if you strum all of your strings for A minor. So just do five for now. D7 is a four string chord. That keeps D, the open D string, as the lowest note of that chord. If all of your strings aren't ringing clearly, then you want to check your finger placement. Make sure you're using your fingertips. Make sure no fingers are touching a string that they shouldn't be touching. And sometimes it's just a matter of we need to press down a little bit harder. So use these two chords at the top of page 36 to uh, review these tips about chord changes and you'll soon be really proficient at A minor and D7 and you'll be ready to play this whole page. I'm going to play that first exercise, the top two lines. It includes the G, and you can use any G that we've worked on. It includes a C, and you can use any C that we've worked on. 
E minor, you might remember, is, is this one. And so uh, the strum is one, two, and three, four, and. So I'll just play those two lines for you so you'll see how they're going to sound. One, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. measure and let it ring for four beats. Hey, you can do this. All you need to do is get good at A minor D7 and then practice these, this little exercise. You should also play Molly Malone. It's the next song on page 36. It's, it's in 3-4 time. So uh, you're going to strum it like this. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. You can play both these songs. Remember to always review. Review everything that we've been working on recently and make sure that you warm up each day. Do the warm ups that we've talked about. And the main thing is you just want to really focus on getting started with your practice each day. It's easy to practice, but it's sometimes tough to get started. So just get started and you'll see that the practice time will go by really quickly and you'll be better at guitar when we meet again. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you next week. I missed you today. But thank you so much for taking lessons with me. And I'll see you next time. Remember, you call me or text me if you have any questions whatsoever. Okay, thanks, Christian.